Hey everyone, back with another Automa. This time it's for Cascadia. This Automa will turn the Beat Your High Score solo mode into a solo mode with a win-loss condition. So with this Automa, you're going to get 27 cards. You're going to get a new updated score sheet. You're going to get an AI scoring card as well as an AI player board. Now this player board is designed to fit the different tiles and tokens so if it prints out funny uh, just check your settings that you don't have fit to print or print to fit because um, I know in my playtesting that issue came up a couple of times so these should fit the tokens and tiles exactly when you place them on them. Alright so to set up for a solo Automa game you are going to get the AI player board go ahead and place it out you're going to put the uh, scoring card for the AI just right here. You are going to shuffle the AI deck of 27 cards and you're going to remove 7. This will give you a 20 card Automa deck which is allow you to do the next thing which is you don't need to remove any tiles before you start playing like in a multiplayer two player game. I went ahead and bought another bag to put all my wildlife tokens in and I have my Cascadia bag which I have all my habitat tiles in. Alright, so to set up, you're going to create your scoring cards just as you would in a multiplayer game. You're going to get your starting tile ready, have your nature tokens or pine cones nearby, and then you're going to have your four habitat tiles as well as your four wildlife tokens. You're going to shuffle this deck, get rid of seven, place this on the draw deck area, and you are ready to begin. If you're playing on normal and easy, um, you, then you're ready to begin. If you're playing on hard, then you need to draw one wildlife token from the bag and place this somewhere in the wilderness, which is this 4x5 grid. This one, for instance, could go on any of the foxes or any of the wilds. Once you do that, play is ready to begin. On your turn, you're going to take your turn as normal. You're going to take one of the selected columns, the habitat tile, as well as the token, add them to your player area, gain any pine, uh, any nature tokens if you meet the conditions, and on future turns you can spend those nature tokens to mix and match between what you select. When it is the AI's turn, you're going to flip a card from this deck. When you flip it, you're going to first look to see is there overcrowding. So you know what overcrowding is in Cascadia. If there's three or four of the same wildlife token, that is considered overcrowding. If there is four, it will automatically wipe just as, as in a normal uh, multiplayer game. If there's three, there's a decision that needs to be made by the player. This card makes that decision for the AI. So if there's overcrowding of three, it will either choose to wipe the board or don't wipe the board. If it wipes it, you, you put them off to the side, draw three new ones, and put the three back in the bag. Okay. The next thing you need to check on the AI card is to see if there is a nature token. If there is, you're simply going to take one from the supply and place it here in its nature token spot on its AI board. There's a chance that it could use those later in the game. Then you're going to select for the AI whatever is shaded. So in this case, it's going to take this column because that is what's shaded on its card. When it takes it, it's going to first want to place the habitat tile in one of the habitats showing on its AI board, mountains, forests, plains, wetlands, and oceans. Well, how do you know where to place it? In this circumstance, there's two. So there's wetlands and there's plains. So you're going to check going from left to right which one of those shows up first on the AI card. In this case, plains is the one that shows up first. So I'm going to go ahead and place this. I like to play, place them face down on the plains area. And this is going to allow the AI to score for majorities at the end of the game. Now if it was an easy one, there is one of these where there's only one terrain on it, then it just simply goes into the terrain that matches. But in the case that it doesn't have a matching terrain, this will break the tie from left to right. We'll talk about what this means here in a second. Let's say, for instance, this card was drawn. You'll check for overcrowding. There's no, it does not gain a nature token. And then it will look 
to do this first option over here on the left. If it has a nature token, it will look to discard it. So it would discard it back to the supply. And then it would take this combination of habitat tile and wildlife token. If it does not have a nature token, it's simply going to do over what's over here. It's going to take this combination. So those are the two types of cards you're gonna see in the deck. After you've placed the habitat tile, you need to decide where you want to place the wildlife token for the AI. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this in the discard pile. The wildlife token can go in one of three areas on the AI board. It can go in the wilderness, it can go in the wildlife refuge, and it can go in the nature reserve. In the wilderness, the token has to either go on a matching token slot, or it can go in one of the wild slots. Only one token can go on each slot. So if I put this here, nothing else can go on top of this token. Okay. The nature reserve is you can start stacking tokens here on this, this disk slot. slot. You can put a maximum of five here, but you cannot put two, uh, more than one of the same token. So if I put an elk here on a future turn, I can't put another elk here. And it's going to score based off how many there are in the stack at the end of the game. If you decide to put it in the wildlife refuge, then you have one of six slots to put it. If you put it in either the three, four, or three, it's simply going to score it that many victory points at the end of the game if it's covered. And if you put it over in one of these slots, you're going to add an X amount of habitat tiles to each of the ones showing. How many do you add? You look at the AI card drawn that turn. So in this case, you look at the bottom right, it's three. So if I place this elk here, I have to place three uh, habitat tiles from the bag on wetlands, no matter what they show on them. And then I have to place another three uh, habitat tiles on mountains, on the mountains habitat. So it's going to get a total of six um, tiles that's going to help it score at the end of the game. Same thing for this one except if it's oceans and plains. And for this one it's, it's, it's just slightly different. It's forest and you're going to put X amount of habitat tiles from the bag on forest and it's going to gain an X amount of nature tokens from the supply based off this number and it's going to add it to his player board to use for later or to score at the end of the game. Now, if on a subsequent turn I place one here, by doing that, it's going to score these points for the AI at the end of the game. So it, for each completed row, it's going to score a certain amount of points and for each completed column at the end of the game, it's going to score a certain amount of points based off what you complete. At the end of 20 turns, the game will end and we're going to go to final scoring. I've updated the score sheet for you to print out. So let's go over that now. So for the wildlife, to, uh, wildlife tokens, you're going to score as normal per the card that you set up at the beginning of the game. And the AI is going to score based off of this card. For each group of bears within the wilderness, it's going to score points. So if there's one bear, but, but if there's only one token right here, that's a group, and that would score five. But if there's two orthogonally adjacent to each other, that would score eight. And if there are three that form a, a group, then that would score 15. Elk are going to score per group. If there's an elk by itself, it'll score three. If there are two elk next to each other, it will score seven. If there's three, it's going to score 10. If there are three, one, two, three in a row right here, it's going to score 12. And if it's in this shape, it's going to score 18. Okay. For salmon, it's going to score for each run. So if I had a salmon here and a here, but none here, then that would be two runs of one. So that would score eight points total. But if I had two next to each other, that would be one run. That would score seven. If I had three next to each other, that would be 11. And if I had one, two, three, four, five, six, that would score 24. Hawks are going to score three points each. If they're not adjacent, orthogonally adjacent to a fish, it's going to score six points each. And foxes are going to score for each fox on the board. 
the number of unique adjacent animal types around it, orthogonally speaking. And foxes do count. So if I had a fox by itself with no animals next to it, it's going to score seven points. If I have a fox here and let's say an elk here, then that fox would just score three points and so on and so forth. If, if all four spots are um, covered with unique animals, it's going to score six points for that fox and you'll just check for each fox. So that is the top half of the scorecard. The next half is going to score based off habitat tiles. For each terrain, you're going to score the number, the AI is going to score the number of tiles that are sitting on the AI board. So in this case, the mountains would score three, the forest would score four, one, and this looks like seven, and zero. And then for majorities, you're going to compare their number to what you have, and whoever has the majority scores just the same in a normal two-player game. I believe it is three points for first place, and or two points for first place, and zero points for second place. And if you tie, you both get one each. All right, so the habitats will score, the wildlife tokens will score, and then we get this new section here at the bottom. For nature tokens, you score one point for each one that you have remaining at the end of the game. The AI is going to score one point for each nature token it has remaining at the end of the game, unless you're playing on hard, and then it's going to be worth two points each. The wildlife refuge and the nature reserve are going to score here. And you can see these four ones are new, and they're only for the AI, so you're going to see an NA next to the human um, side of the scorecard. So the wildlife refuge, you're going to look at your board, and any discs that are covering victory point spots, as well as any completed rows or, and columns are going to score. So in this case, this was three points, plus another three is six, and this row was completed, so the total for the wildlife refuge would be eight. For the nature reserve, let's say you had a stack of four here at the end of the game. If you're playing on normal or hard, you're going to look to see how many wildlife tokens you have stacked here. In this case, four, it would score the AI 14 points. But if you're playing on easy, no matter how many discs you place here, whether it's a, a four or five or three, the AI will be capped at 10, which is why this is highlighted in yellow. So you can still place five here. It basically gives you two free placements on easy. You are then going to check the wilderness on the AI player board for any completed columns and rows. So just humor me for a second and pretend all these matched accordingly. For any completed columns and rows, which means that they have disks completely filled in on them, on easy, each completed column is going to be worth one additional point for the AI, and each completed row is going to be worth three. On normal, it's going to be two and four, and on hard, it's three and six, and you'll just tally those totals here. You will add up your total score, and whoever has the most points wins. If there is a tie, the tiebreaker is broken the same as in a multiplayer game. Whoever has the most nature tokens. If there is still a tie, the AI wins. And with that, you now know how to play a game of Cascadia versus the unofficial Solo Automa. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on the files page, my geek list, or the YouTube channel, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have fun.